Hello, today I'm going to try to help you understand the Nyquist frequency and why a lot of times you need to do oversampling to avoid aliasing and also kind of like what aliasing is. Um, so if we have a digital system and we're trying to uh, output a signal from that digital system, so we need to do a digital to analog conversion. Um, we're essentially taking, you know, our signal, right, it's continuous, that's kind of our assumption here, it's continuous, and we're going to kind of chop it up into individual samples, right? This is in the time domain. Um, and by, by taking those individual samples, right, we've essentially quantized the signal in time. And so what that's going to look like in the frequency domain is if, if this is our signal in the frequency domain, so um, you have your positive side and your negative side of your Fourier transform. Typically, um, if you're dealing with like a, an equalizer or something, they'll only talk about the positive side. So it goes zero to the max frequency, but there's also a negative side. This is just a consequence of the Fourier transform and the math there. Um, you can you know, read about that more in detail. Um, but basically, if we want to chop this up into discrete samples, we're uh, essentially making it discrete in time. Um, a general rule of thumb for going between the frequency domain and your time domain is that if something is discrete in time, it's going to repeat in the frequency domain. So um, by chopping it up, what we've essentially turned this into is a signal that looks like this. And this goes on forever in both sides. Um, and so this looks like a repeated version of this original signal. And you're right, it is. Um, and it repeats at every, you know, whatever this sampling frequency is. So F sample. It repeats every F sample. Um, this is just due to the fact that you're multiplying, uh, if you want to read about this in more detail, you're essentially multiplying your continuous time signal by uh, a bunch of delta functions. It's like a, a comb filter, a, a delta comb. And what that uh, delta train, it's called a delta train, what it looks like in the frequency domain is also a bunch of delta functions. And so what you're, end up, what you're going to end up doing is essentially a convolution between this and a bunch of delta functions. So that's going to look like this thing kind of spaced at each of those delta functions. Um, if that math was over your head, that's fine, but this is essentially what's happening. You know, discrete in time is going to be repeating in the frequency domain. So here we can actually, we can just recover this exact signal if our sample frequency is high enough by essentially filtering it. So what, what, what filtering would do is if we take like a low pass filter, for example, and we have its cutoff be right here, you know, whatever F max is, then we can filter it and basically get our signal triangle back because these other things won't be there. I should also add, so what these look like in the time domain is um, actually if you just took your original thing and just kind of like made it blocky, right? That's what these are going to look like in the time domain. So it's kind of quantized in time like that. And that's where you get those repeating things. And so when you're filtering it, you're kind of just smoothing these out. Um, yeah. So this is if our sample rate is high enough. And actually what you notice here is that if we were to take this sample rate and actually kind of make it a little bit less until it's actually twice of F max. All right, so if, if F max right here, if we're, if we're sitting at zero and we have our sample rate at two times F max, we can still recover the original signal by um, doing our filtering because these signals do not overlap and you'd essentially just be filtering out all the other signals and you'd get your original triangle back. Um, 
So what, what happens if they start to overlap? Well, if they start to overlap, you've got a problem. Basically, that's going to look like your signals doing this, um, where f sample is too low. Um, and when you go to filter it, you know, even if you filter it right here, you're still going to have this portion of your f sample in it. And what this is actually called, um, I think it's called like, like a frequency reflection. It's it basically, well, you'll see. Um, for example, if you have like a sawtooth wave or something, is you'll see your harmonics kind of get to the maximum sample rate and then kind of bounce back. It's what it looks like. It looks like they're bouncing back, and it, it kind of looks like that here too. But that's actually caused by this other. Um, triangle that we have over here as a consequence of this de discretization step. Um, so, yeah, let's let's say we have a signal whose f max is higher than our sample rate. Um, so we would have a, a condition like this um, if we tried to just go direct that signal and turn it into an analog. You know, if we just put it straight into a DAC and at, at a certain sample rate we would have a problem. Um, so what we often do is actually oversample it. So we make our our F sample actually larger um, than our, say like F max is the uh, sample rate of the uh, of the DAC. Um, because if we if we had just sampled at this at this F max right here, we would have a triangle right here and th those would overlap. Um, so essentially what you want to do is sample at a higher rate there. And then what you can do from then on is actually filter it. So, so what I'll do is I will draw these triangles again. I'm just going to assume that we have a signal that's band limited at like 48 kilohertz, right? And you know the the sample rate is going to be actually let's let's pretend it's just you know something arbitrary All right we have our f over sample and then this is our actual sample rate and so what we're going to do is we're going to actually filter this because remember we have the the if we tried to just sample at f sample we have them overlap we we're going to actually filter this signal and have it cut off at our desired Nyquist frequency, so our desired maximum frequency, which in this case would be F sample divided by two, right? Because we want to sample, if, if we want to, we want to essentially cut it off so that, you know, if we filter this, it would look like this triangle here, where this is F sample over two, that's that frequency. And if we were to sample at every F sample, these two wouldn't kind of overlap at all. All right, so you're kind of, you're, you're cutting off your signal um, prior to putting it through the DAC in order to have it not overlap. And um, so you're kind of, you're band limiting it essentially. Um, yeah, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to essentially just low pass filter it, cut off at, you know, whatever our desired Nyquist frequency is. And then, so that still looks like this, um, if we're still oversampling. And then what we can do is we can actually just downsample, um, this. So say we were, you know, our, our DAC sample rate is 48 kilohertz and we're sampling at 96 kilohertz. Um, you know, we can downsample there, and what that'll do is basically take these and just squish them. So, you know, you end up with a bunch of these things. But notice that they're not overlapping anymore because we've kind of, we've filtered them. We've cut them off. And so what the DAC is going to do is it's going to essentially output this, but it's, it's still going to be blocky, right? But the DAC um, does another step in the end, is that it's going to have its own low-pass filter. 
So the DAX low pass filter is going to it's gonna it's gonna output this originally, then it's gonna low pass filter it so that it ends up just looking like this. And there's nothing else. So our original signal um, would have originally had kind of a tail over here of frequencies, but we've cut them off, we've band limited it. Um, yeah, so this right here ideally is the Nyquist frequency. Or the the you know the half the F sample essentially so I don't know if the Nyquist frequency is the sample rate or the half that but yeah F sample over two that's the maximum frequency that you can recover from sampling here um, yeah so you know typically the the steps are you oversample so you don't get an overlap then you um, do the, the filtering at your desired sample rate over two, and then you down sample to that sample rate, and then put it through the DAC. So this, this right here, this is what the DAC is doing. Um, so what happens if we would try to just filter this without the oversampling? You might think like, oh, well, I can just, I can just filter it um, already. Uh, what's going to happen is, so let's say we didn't oversample. We just had our triangles overlapping. Um, this is the actual DAC sample rate. Um, if we just try to put this through the DAC, what it would do is basically just cut it off right here and you'd end up with, you know, that this signal right here, which is the the reflected signal, is is a component in this. You don't want that, so you'd end up with kind of this signal here, which is going to contribute a little bit. So that's going to kind of like look like this. It's just going to add noise to the actual output signal. Um, and if you tried to sample, you know, it's it's really hard to make filters. You, you'd probably have to have a cutoff that's like lower than your desired sample rate. And at the end of the day, what you've essentially done is just made, done this exact same process, but at a lower sample rate. Um, and typically you don't want a lower sample rate because then people are going to hear it and it's going to sound bad. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's essentially why you oversample in audio. No, this wasn't the best explanation, but it's uh, if you've done a little bit of signal processing, um, should be pretty easy to follow. But yeah, that's that's essentially what's going on there.